guys. So tonight I wanted to talk to you about something. I was thinking about this a couple nights ago and I just had a few other things on my mind. So I'm making the video now instead of then. But I want to talk to you about this idea of, uh, of high level defense in combat, uh, in hand to hand combat I should say. Because you see, uh, a while back I posted a video on just general concepts of, of defense. And, and I know I mentioned this, but I want to go into just a little more detail here. And that's the idea at the higher levels, once you have, I don't want to use the term mastery, because you know, mastery is such a vague and fundamentally meaningless term. But, you know, once you have gained competence and fluency in things like your ranging and your timing, and your structure and power delivery and leverage and all those things it's time to start moving beyond the basic forms and moving into um, you know moving into a freer expression and you know in in the art of Wing Chun we often spend a lot of time defending and striking at the same time and to be truthful, more than that, you should like you should go beyond this idea of if a punch is coming at me or a kick is coming at me or this is coming at me, whatever. You gotta get beyond this idea of I have to block it. You even have to get off this idea of I have to move out of the way. You need to start getting into this mindset of I need to intercept. Because at the highest levels, the keenest, most clever martial artists don't spend their time playing defense. They see the opening and they take it. If a punch is coming at me, I don't need to worry about that punch. All I need to be doing is looking for the opening that that punch is leaving open and move to take it while avoiding the damage from the punch. I won't have enough time to block and then come in and strike, or at least rarely. And if we start playing out here at the range where I can start using my hands and all that, we're getting into the realm of ranging issues and timing issues because I'm playing at too great a range now. Can I use my hands? Should I use my hands? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not telling you not to use defense. But what I'm saying is that don't just parry. Your parry should also be a strike. You realize that your punch is a wedge, correct? If a straight punch is coming at you, you come in and punch through it. Now guess what? This arm, if I'm going on the center line, you can see this in the camera. This is relatively on my center line here. My shoulder's over here, my fist is here. That's a small wedge. And if I shoot it through, now the punch is traveling off and I've hit you and deflected your punch at the same time. Now interception is um, very complex in nature. Uh, much of what you see in some of the grappling arts, the idea of using your opponent's momentum against them or using their force against them, that is a form of interception. It's turning their attack into not only your defense but also your attack. It is this idea of not, not really reversal but it's this idea of cutting off the attack and, and that's really what it is. It's, it's cutting off the attack to make your own attack. In uh, football, I'm not a sports guy at, at all, and I, I know next to nothing about football, but in football they talk about, about interceptions, and that's when somebody comes in and, you know, takes the pass for the other team, right? So the, the other team gets the ball. It's the same thing in, in martial arts. You use your opponent's energy in such a way that it becomes your energy. Uh, we see this frequently in the grappling arts, but it applies to the striking arts as well. I don't have to 
waste my time separating out defense and offense all the time. They can be one and the same. And quite honestly, it is a much more efficient way to deal with it. And the more condensed that your art becomes, the more streamlined that your art becomes, the easier it is for your nervous system to process it under heavy stress. Because realize, we're not just talking martial arts here. We're talking survival fitness. Martial arts is just one small part of that. You know, and, and I, I've said it before, we're not really talking about you know, uh, uh, prepping and homesteading. Well, I, I think those things are fantastic. It's not my area of expertise. My goal here is to help you prepare your mind and body for eventual crises and for you know, problematic circumstances and emergencies. Preparing the mind and body is so important because it doesn't matter how much ammo you've set aside if you don't have the mindset to use it. It doesn't matter how many months of food and water you have set aside if you lose your shit in the first 30 minutes and you know, blow up your own house or whatever. I mean, that's ridiculous, but you know what I'm saying. So, in that context, I'm trying to give you these ideas where you're not just learning how to punch and kick. You can go anywhere and learn how to punch and kick. That's not my concern. I will certainly teach you how to do those things and as efficiently and with as much strength and speed and timing, leverage and all that as, as possible as I know how. But I want you to understand that the concepts that I'm giving you are the things that will help you survive a bad situation, whether it be a brawl with a drunken guy coming out of a bar that thinks you looked at his girlfriend wrong, to an assault, to a, you know, a hostile takeover or whatever. Because we're talking about these concepts. We're not worried about techniques. We're not worried about, you know, how do you deal with a pinky jab to the forehead? Who develops specific techniques for such minuscule and unlikely circumstances? It's ridiculous. Uh, but you start being able to put things into categories and start thinking of, oh, well, these kind of things go together, and all these kind of things go together. And we start thinking of these things as singular things, you know, multi-expressioned singular things. And so now defense is just defense. Defense isn't a series of 64 blocks. And offense isn't punches and kicks and joint locks, but rather it's just now striking and grappling. It's linear, it's curving, it's entangling, it's locking. You have much more streamlined, much more compressed ideas. And so what I'm getting at here with interception is that I don't have to wait for you to finish with your attack. We're not playing nice. We're not taking turns. If you are fighting fair, you are fighting poorly. So I want you to understand that, now granted, I'm not going to be standing still, but if a punch is coming at me, I don't have to worry about it. All I have to do is punch through the punch. Or, let's say I want to move to a better angle so I'm not directly in front of it. I could just shift my weight or take a small step and punch over the punch on the outside, wedging it off, making his arm collapse in here. Or, if he's more like a boxer with his elbow turned out, now he's, you know, put into this armbar thing. Whatever. You know, it makes it difficult for him. He's closed off his self because he was committed to one path. I was more malleable, and I took my chance there, and now that his arm, you know, he's been hit in the head, his arm is pinned, I can grab it, hit him again, club him upside the head, whatever. You've got all sorts of ideas, but the interception is incredibly important, and it's not taught nearly enough. We get taught these patterns of block, and then strike, block, and then strike. Don't worry about it. Forget it. It's not critical. What is critical is moving yourself, 
and attacking well. Don't worry about what your opponent is doing. Cover your center line and attack. That's all I got for you tonight, and I'll talk to you guys later. Good journey.